Okay, good morning, good morning. No rain yet. Might be some later on, who knows? It's springtime, so it's going back and forth day after day. Some days sunny, some days rainy. Pretty much the same as everywhere, I guess. <laughs> so, trying to get things sorted out here. Okay, good morning, good morning. What it? Where's my bench camera? The bench camera, it's on, it's on. Internal camera, off, on. Hi, desk camera, off, on. Just a second here. Something come unplugged. No signal. It was okay a minute ago. Just a minute, just a minute. I can use that one. Okay, hang on a second. The camera is on. It's showing at me. It's plugged in. It was working a moment ago. Unplug it. Plug it back in. Jiggle the cord, yeah. Desk camera. More nipples, I don't know. <laughs> so, what's the problem? The camera is showing me an image. It outputs HDMI. HDMI comes into the video adapter, and I'm not seeing the light. The light is not showing on the video adapter. It was a minute ago. I tested this all just when I set it up. There goes the twins. So it's either the adapter that's wrong or it's the cable coming into it that's wrong. Wiggle it. So I go outside and carve outside with the street cam. Just a second here. Okay, let me recycle the camera just a sec. Okay, camera recycled. The adapter is powered USB. The adapter is just a, it's a passive device. The camera signal comes in at one end and the signal goes out to the to the computer. <coughs> I have two of the adapters. Okay, for the moment, excuse me just a sec, let me switch adapters. I'm gonna turn off the outside camera for a moment and switch adapters out so that we can see if maybe the signal which where the problem is is the the adapter for the outside camera is warm. The video adapter for the inside camera is cold. Let's just try switching out the sources. Hang on a sec. So the outside camera is going to go down for a moment. There we have it. It's the adapter. The Magewell, Magewell USB Capture HDMI Plus. It's worked for me very, very well for a number of years. So it's the adapter or the cable from the adapter or the USB port again. So, so. And these adapters are expensive. They're a few hundred bucks each. But it wasn't showing a blue, still not showing a blue light. Okay, enough. We can't fool around with this all day, so we have no outside camera today. Work is more important. Look at this. Look at this. Look what's going on here.
this one's gone down. That makes no sense. Now the other one's gone down. for this. Excuse me a second here. There it is. Don't touch anything, Dave. Something's going on here. Don't touch anything. Okay, we have a system up and running here. Sorry about this. Excuse me. I'm showing my Amateur status again here. Let's get some work done. My apologies about the outside camera. I really don't know. I know. I can maybe let me plug it in in the background here and see if it wants to come up later by itself. But uh, no, it's not showing a blue light. Yeah, just don't fool with it. Okay, sorry about this. Let's get some work done. Elgato, I had an Elgato and it was nothing but trouble. I mean, this one is trouble today, but this has been really good service for years now. Two or three years. It's been really good service. Okay, we have a good show and tell later on. Stuff that's coming in for show and tell that's going to match something we already have. So let's put that aside for later. That's another show and tell for sometime later. Okay, the work we have today. There is work I have to do. I've got to do more embossing. We're not going to do that today. I'm going to work on the carving today, the color separations. But let's just take a peek at what Kubota-san sent us. I'll be doing this embossing later this afternoon off stream. But let's just have a peek at the prints. This is Kubota-san packaging. You all recognize it. Actually, I don't even remember what print. This was sent to him while I was in Canada, so I don't know actually what job this is. It's one of the uh, landscape prints, Jed's landscape prints. Oh, yes, 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 this one. This is from the uh, Woodblock Pilgrimage series from a couple of years back. This is a new batch. The series is still going really, really strongly. This is a new batch of prints just arrived from kubota -san. And because he doesn't put his name on it, I have to do that job. Let's have a look. These are such nice prints, you know. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful print. Simple, effective, excellent design, superb carving. Chon San carved it, and wonderful printing from Kubota San. Someone's asking if it's a flip book. Yeah, can you imagine carving 100 woodblock prints to move, to make movement? No, it's the same print, I guess 100 times or, or 90 times. I don't know how many we sent. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It's so much pleasure for me to be running this organization that produces this stuff. You know, we've talked about this before. I didn't design this, I didn't carve it, I didn't print it, but I made this, you know. So later this afternoon, that's going to get uh, name embossed, and here's the embossing plate. So it was put on my desk yesterday. But let's get to the real work. We're doing color transfers today for the shear certificate image. Oh, I can't, we got, we got to finish the key block first. Okay, so the plan for today is this. I have to finish the key block, finish the last bit of, I know, cutting around the outside edges here. That should take 10 or 15 minutes. 
And you just, last night I prepared some more transfer paper, some paper with the gumpy stuck on top of it, and we'll print and take some transfers, and then try and figure out what, how many colors we need. I think I have a color separation worked out for here, but first, let's get this carved. I thought the carving was finished, it's not. This was already done. Anyway, no problem. Work is work. Going by the noise out there, maybe it's better we don't have an outside camera today. The construction has started on that building behind us, and uh, the, the first step is going to be pile driving. They're building like a four or five story building there, so they're going to drive piles right down. And uh, At the moment, they're doing the preparation work for that. They're measuring out, they've made a little drill and they're trying to figure out, I guess, how deep to go and stuff, I guess, I don't know. But once they get started, it's going to be pile driving right behind us. I've got no idea how long it's going to take, but it's going to be bang, bang, bang. Someone's asking, do I do any soldering? I haven't done any of that for many, many years. When I worked in, a, in Vancouver, I worked in a place that fixed musical instruments. McDonald music, we fixed flutes and all that stuff. And my, my bench was flutes. and and small woodwind instruments. So yes, I did a bunch of soldering in it. But in recent years, I haven't touched that work for, my God, 45 years or something, I don't know. That's one of those street cutters, is it? They're cutting up the surface of the street, so they must be laying a new pipe or something. Someone's asking about YouTube updates. It's, it's, you know, it's the first thing on my list, actually. I, I know we are way, way, way behind on YouTube. I have uh, any number of beautiful, interesting topics to do. My problem right now is that I'm still very much firefighting. Uh, and it's very difficult to try and find time for that. Although this is now getting to be critical. I don't know. If we don't get some YouTube videos done soon. Already, traffic to our website is hugely decreased from what it, what it normally is. 
and this is absolutely because uh, YouTube is not driving traffic to us at the moment. Let alone the Patreon people who are paying money to get me to make YouTube videos, of which have not been appearing. So. I'm behind the eight ball. I know, I understand. Someone's saying, what about taking a week off stream to concentrate on YouTube? Well, I don't think that would really help. I mean, the stream here these days doesn't involve any preparation. This is work that I need to be doing. I've got to make these share certificates. And as you know, basically, I just sit down and turn the camera on while I'm doing it. So I'm not doing any preparation work for this stream. It doesn't really... It doesn't really take time away from my other schedule. It's just turn the camera on. So I don't know if that would really help. things that are taking my time and eating most of my time are, are not this, they are running the business and the business management stuff. The level of business we're doing and the number of employees we have, it just requires that much management time. And until I can figure out how to get a bunch of that off my shoulders onto somebody else, that's the main, that's the main killer here. Partly that's it. The other thing is my own ability to keep going for too many hours. You know, When I was younger, it didn't much matter. I would just keep going all day, drop at 11 o'clock or something, go to bed, get up and start again and keep going all day and do it. And I'm having real trouble now keeping that kind of schedule up. <laughs> Normal, of course, you know, not complaining. I just don't... I can't pull the energy that I used to pull, you know. <laughs> I didn't really want to talk about this today. It's okay. <laughs> the I saw a picture, I, I clipped it. I, I was reading a website the other day. What was I was reading a story on The Atlantic. It's a, a whatever, it's an online magazine. Well, it used to be a real magazine, now it's an online magazine. And maybe it's both, I don't know. And they, like, I, I have that in my news feed that I'm reading in the mornings, you know. I get up each morning around, uh, I wake up each morning around 5.30 to 6, go upstairs, take the paper out. But the pool doesn't open till 7.00. So for me, those first uh, the first hour, a couple of hours, I do make a quick email check, but don't do much business stuff. And that's uh, read the newspaper, look at the news and stuff like that in the morning there. So between six o'clock and pool time, and I have a light cup of coffee and one of those little donuts that you've seen me have here, the brand donuts. So that's the morning time. And yesterday when I was doing that, I was reading a story from the Atlantic, and there was an illustration on the story. And I looked at this illustration and thought, I have got to clip that. This is me, my God, this guy has written a story about me. And it, it was, he was a story about fulfillment and, and enjoying your life towards the, the end, when you finished your peak. He was talking about like salarymen and stuff and then people who went to work and retired and stuff like that. I'm not in that category, whatever, but the illustration and I clipped it, and I've got it here. I'm gonna, I gonna see if I can find it here. The illustration that accompanied this. And now I've changed the numbers. The illustration he had, it went. It, it the guy was standing on 50, and he was a typical guy who's facing retirement. He was standing on 50, looking down at this hole. What's going to happen when he's 60 or 70? So I clipped it yesterday and thought, well, it doesn't really suit me because when I was 50, I was doing big things. When I was 60, I started this business. I'm okay. So I changed the numbers. I changed the numbers. And I put it, and there's Dave. Dave is at 70. I'm now 70. And this is what I feel like, actually. So I can't take another step up. My next step is going to be here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. I don't know. So this is sort of how I, I'm laughing as I tell you this, but 
I'm not really laughing about this, you know. No, I don't care about taking up another, taking another step upwards. I'm 70. There's no way I'm going to climb up anymore. But just to hold on to what I've got, you know. And it's not holding on. It's slipping. It's disappearing. You know. Spending two months over in Vancouver in the hospital didn't help either. I, don't know, I, I wasn't in the hospital myself. I was helping take care of my mother, of course. But uh, being in the hospital for like 12 hours a day surrounded by that stuff my god it was uh it pulls you down you know okay we're almost done we got this bolt cleared okay now we're clear i thought we were clear the other day but uh no. now let's do these marks we've got the two marks that are going to show us where the horizon is there's one We're going to need these marks in a few minutes, you'll see. Okay, those are, those, those are coming off there, so it doesn't matter. Don't be neat and clean. Okay, there is our key block, now ready for transfer. We have lots of real estate today with no outside camera. Okay, there we go. What I've got, I've got some, uh, I've got some a brush and some uh, some pigment ready here. And as I said, I've got the three or four. What did I do? Four. One, two, three, four. Four transfer sheets ready. So I'm going to, I think I need all four. Yeah, I need all four. Let's pull an impression from this four times. I get that wrong every time I get that switch wrong. I'm going to carve the oval. We're not going to carve the oval on the key block. I'm going to cheat with that. I have, well, we'll, we'll see when we get to it. Relax. I'm not going to carve the oval on the key block. We're going to carve the oval on two of the color blocks, the sky block and the, and the C block. Okay, here we go. This the step nobody likes. We're going to make this block dirty. I think for printing too, we'll have to carve away a bit more. It's too close. You're supposed to leave a couple of fingers. It doesn't matter today, but when we start, you know, when we start printing this batch, we'll need more clear space around the outside. Absolutely. You can see it's way too close. For today, it doesn't matter. Okay, junk paper. There's our little boat. Very roughly printed. There's our boat. I don't know. Lobster trap? I don't know. We know no idea what it is at the back. It looks like more people up at the front, you know. I don't really know what I carved.
Now this roughness up at the top here, this is not like broken stuff. This is actually what the print looks like. You know, that's the way Yoshida designed it. So this is not careless ukiyo-e carving. This is, this is the design. I think I got too much space in there. Oh, I see, it looks more like ropes coming down. I think I might have too much junk in there. Okay, maybe I can clear some of that out so it looks like ropes coming down. And this is a bit too thick. But we're good to go. I think we're good to go. And there's the two horizon marks. We'll use those to determine the line between the sea and the sky. Okay, that's the basic run. Let's make four color transfer sheets. There's gumpy paper, né? This is a double layered piece. This is thin gumpy pasted just into this area. And today's gumpy, this isn't our normal five momme peelable gumpy. This is that antique box of gumpy that we got a while ago. Okay, put the block away now for a few minutes. How is the kento done if I glued the gumpy diagonally? I don't, don't get confused with us. The gumpy here is diagonally because the piece I had was just too small, so I just made it fit. I just made it fit inside this oval. D don't get confused by the fact that that's diagonal. It means nothing. That's not going to be. That's not going to be part of the picture. It's straight. You don't don't get confused by that. It's nothing. <coughs> so Gumpy is older than me. Nay, absolutely older than me. What's the size difference? The original print. The, the Yoshida print that was in his book in 1939 was this size and the one we are making here now. So we're about, I don't know, you tell me, half size, whatever, something like that. Okay, now there's people here who don't understand what's happening. Let's just explain it while we are doing it. We've got four transfer sheets here. Let's just do one first so people can see what's going on. We have a color block, we have a block, we have a block for printing the key lines. You just saw me rub pigment, it makes keys. Okay, we will need another block here to print, for example, the sails of the boat. How do we know where the location is and how to carve it? That's what we're gonna do right now over the next couple of minutes. I'll take one of these sheets that I just did, 
and we'll decide this is going to be the transfer sheet for the sails and the boat. So here's how it goes. We've looked at the original, this is the lines, and we're going to color in the areas that we want to keep on the next block. There's, I want a wood block that will print the sail area. So we color in the sails. Now this doesn't mean the sails are going to be red, we're just defining a zone. It's going to be the sails and the body of the boat. And all this stuff on top of the boat. And the people. and this spark. I don't think there's anything up top there. Let's have a check. The marker is indeed raising the gumpy. This is interesting. Look at it. It's feathering the gumpy. I think this, compared to the gumpy we have, the gumpy that we've been selling, the five mommy stuff, the stuff that we peel, it's actually sized. It's got dosa, glue in it. This gumpy that we found, this antique stuff, it seems like it's not sized. If I take my finger and rub a bit of it, it does. Look at this. It pulls up. It pulls up straight away. This is not sized gumpy. So we would have to be really careful. If I'm going to use this for transfers, there's no way I can use it by itself. It's okay if I spray it to a backing paper. But because it's not sized, it really will expand and contract if you make it moist or if the weather changes. <coughs> so I can get away with it like this for small scale stuff and for spraying it down. But that gumpy paper in the antique box we got is much less, uh, much less suitable for transfers because it's so easily you know, variable. So before I paste this down, let's confirm what we're doing here. Well, on the original too, it's interesting. These parts where the ropes were hanging down, they were also put on that block. So let's, let's just copy what he did here. Those little things at the top, right up to the top. This is the worst of our blocks here. Let's put it right here. That's going to be C. Now that'll be the wood for the C. Yeah. That'll be the piece for the sky, I think. Let's use this one. The top of the mast, on the original, the top of the mast is thick enough that there's body to it, so there's going to be sail colors there. On the one I've just carved, the top of the mast is thin enough, it's only black. Anyway, let's go. First step, registration marks. John's got it. Next step, cutting the kento into the block. For those who know, kento is a word that means the registration system. So in other words, 
that line at the moment, this is not the kento. Kento is the whole system. The thing I'm cutting right now is what's called the kagi, the key. The corner mark is called the kagi. The glasses. <clears throat> the corner mark is the kagi, and the other mark, the horizontal mark, is called the hikitsuke. Hikitsuke, it's a double barreled word. Hiki is pull, and ske is, I don't know, align with, or, or meet, or join. And together, it's called the kento. The system is called the kento, but it's kagi and hikitsuke. There'll be a test at the end, class, <laughs> not. There's the two marks, and replicating exactly what we did a minute ago when we put this into print. If we put this in here now, this transfer sheet we made, if we put this in here now and glue it down, you can understand how the position now has been transferred. The position of those sails has been transferred. Let's do it. Lots of honey jokes, right? I thought so. <laughs> Okay, the backing sheet is completely unneeded. It can just come out of here. Wash it off later. And we have our transfer. And look at this, there's certainly no peel. Look at this, it just, it just disintegrates on the back. This gumpy, you know, it's not really designed for doing these printmaking transfers. It's very, very thin, very, very soft, very, very fragile. Maybe perfect for those people that are painting, drawing. There we go. <coughs> so that's the transfer system. There's one of the color blocks ready for carving. Now instead of me sitting here carving this right now, I want to go ahead, I want to do another transfer. <clears throat> so I'm saying, could I use this block for three impressions? Well, I'm going to use it for four. One, two, three, four. Could I fool around and try and get more on it? We do try and do this. We try and line things up, but we have a problem. We can't use it in a different way, vertically or horizontally. Would it have been possible to get it? If I had moved it out here, I really don't see. I could make another registration mark here and put an, 
another one there. They start to get too close together. It seems a bit of a waste, just such small areas, but hey, this is the job. This is what we do. I'm going to do it anyway. As I was saying, we're going to do five colors on this, and we're going to do it with four blocks. Hee hee hee. You'll see how in a minute. Okay, let's do another separation. Now, 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 the oval. How are we going to get the oval? I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm not going to draw it all over again. I went upstairs to the storeroom here, and I dug up another block from one of our share certificates, the one from last year. Last year we did the same thing, one, two, three, four. And last year's print had a background color that is, guess what, it's an oval. In fact, we had two of them, blue and nothing. So I'm going to use this because we're following the same pattern every year. Because our share certificates are all exactly the same pattern, I am going to take a transfer from last year's oval. Where's that sheet? Oh, it's pasted down there. Okay. So for the next two, I need one of these for the sky, and I need another one for the sea. And both of those have to know where the oval is. And I could do it just like this. Let's try. Oh, it's upside down. It's this way. So I remember now. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if I can get away with that because. What I did last year, I registered it on the left-hand side, not the right-hand side. Ha, 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 ha. We did that because we had trouble with the block. There was a big spoiled place in the block. So we, we registered it on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side. think about this one yeah that's okay the left hand side if it was the same size piece of paper but what piece of paper did I use last year for doing this this is no longer trivial if I do this on the left hand side Yeah, that matches. But that's a different size paper than this one. So, these pieces of paper are different size. Let's live dangerously here. This way. Okay. All right, now it'll fit. If I put that in there on the left hand side, now it'll be in the right place. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it.
Okay, talk about living dangerously. We're gonna live dangerously here. But anyway, whatever. Let's do what we have to do. Okay, I need to transfer this sky area, sky sea area, to the new print. Let's do this. So what we're doing, <coughs> the black here, have I destroyed that block now by putting black on it? No, I did it so you know, lightly, it doesn't matter. It would be best actually if I took it to the sink and washed it right now, but there's so, such a small amount of pigment on there that it really doesn't matter. I moistened it first so that the pigment wouldn't go deep inside. We just did two very light impressions. I'll wipe it off a little bit now. It's fine, it's good to go. Oh, so not that we're ever gonna be using it again either. There's no plan to use that at all. But, uh, okay, what we've got now then, we have now the location of the background circle confirmed. That's the circle. Does it look like it's in the right place? Let's have a look. Compared to last year's, it does indeed look like it's in the right place. Yes, we're good to go. So, let's uh, draw it. The horizon. Okay, let's call this block the sky block. And what we're going to do is simply, we're going to cut the sky area and leave out the sails. And we can see everything already. I don't really think we need to do the, the marker. It's not going to add any information that we don't already know. And we're going to not do this area. Get our wood. Whoa, whoa. We have a, giz a visitor. Whoa, 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 a moth. A moth. Someone says, hurts my brain to think how this all works. It's, <laughs> it's funny, you know, when I was first doing it, I just could not figure out how to make it happen. I had seen little illustrations in a book and stuff like this, but I could not 
figure it. I could not grok it. I could just not get how it works. What's this one? This guy is going to be this one. John, <laughs> I can't slip anything by John at all, nothing. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, the stuff that sticks in your brains, nay. <laughs> he was uh, quite a person, wasn't he? You know, we all enjoyed his movies and his comedy and stuff, but it seems that as a human being he was a monster. I should do the sky closer to the knot. The water would be even closer. Okay, well, what am I doing here? We're going to use this part of the wood on this one. And I have freedom. I can put it here, 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 here. I can't go this way. If I move the sky closer to the knot, the water would be even closer. I could move this out and then the other one move that this way. That part of the wood is no good though. I want that one in the middle. I think I'm okay here. Who's suggesting this? Karen. No, we're not going to do the water on the other side. That's going to be the sails. This is going to be the water area because it's bad here, but below that, where are we here? That sky water will be here. I think we're okay. I can actually, I still have the freedom. I can move the water out there. I think I'm all right. I think I'm okay. <coughs> Um, if if this one was going to be moved over there, then having this one moved over here would help get them farther apart. But having this one here for the sky, we're going to be printing with this zone. And over there, we're going to print the water that zone. We are well enough apart. I think we're okay. I think I'm okay. And I'll, no guarantees. I get confused about this, but uh, I think we're okay. Okay, class, now's the test. What's this part called? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's the Japanese name for the corner mark? <laughs> and the other one. Are we getting any chocolate eggs here? Alamex got it. Kagi, Kagi, yes, okay. And then what's the other one called? <laughs> that was a, not such a simple word. I warned you there would be a test later. Looks good. Down she goes. Lots of new visitors, are we? Good morning to all the new visitors here. Not quite sure if it's clear what we're doing, but uh, anyway, welcome. Hang around for a while. It's kind of mysterious what's going on at the moment, but it all does make sense.
Oops. Bit too wet. Oh, it's Ayano-san. Ho, ho, ho. Is it that time already? My God. Good morning, good morning. Hello, hello. Hi, hi. How the time does fly. No 10 out of 10s on these. Save, save. This is the area we want, this guy. Someone's asking about FedEx. Yes, the shipment did go through. We scraped through by the skin of our teeth. We were very, very lucky yesterday. Very, very lucky. Do I get a minus, minus out of 10? Okay, then with the last one. The last one's gonna go here, and this is going to be the water side. Oh, before I paste it down, let's do the drawing. So this time we're going to keep the bottom side, obviously. We're going to keep the water area. And between the sails and under here. And we will cut away the boat. It's the same thing in reverse. But yes, a bit too careless there, I'm sorry. This is not good, uh, not good practice. Sorry, let's settle down a bit. Do this a bit more carefully. Bit more carefully, Nay. So I was asking how to do gradations. There's lots and lots of this in the videos. Uh, I, I can't pull out the name of one video at the moment that has specifically gradation, but there are lots and lots out there on our YouTube channel. If you look for some of the videos that I made with Ayumi-san, and we made some doi hanga prints, some of those videos, they all involve gradation work. So if you go back about four years in our YouTube channel, and look for the videos that show making the doi hanga prints, there's a series of four or five of them. They all have lots of gradation printing. Last time today. This is going to go in here, down here, and the area of wood is going to be here for the water. It looks pretty clean. It looks good to go. This time, not quite so much paste, Dave. Glue. That gumpy really is super, super thin, soft gumpy.
there's the difference. The last time was way too much glue. It got soggy. This one, just about the right amount of glue. Can I? the transfers are made. There is something on this print that we are going to have to do that is not included in these four transfers. I won't talk about it just yet. We'll do that in the next stream, I think, or the one after. But for those of you who are thinking about this print, this design, here's basically the original design. This is a faded copy. This is the one that was wrapped outside the blocks. <coughs> We're not going to reproduce the whole thing where it probably won't be a gradation on the sky. But there's something here that's important that I've neglected so far. We have a block for the sea. We have a block for the sky. We have a block for the dark area of the boats and sails, which we could actually maybe print a gradation on if we need it. There's one that's missing, and that's the reflections. What I'm thinking I will do is after we've got these four car carved, I am going to steal this part of the wood here. Let's get this out of the way. There's the sky here on this one, and we have the sea, and then the reflections are below the boat. So I am going to reserve this piece. I'm not going to chop it away when I cut the sky. I'm going to keep this piece of wood, and I'm thinking we will do the reflections in this area. After we do the test printing, I'll do a test print, I'll draw some reflections on it, paste them down, and we'll use this zone, I think. Let's do some carving. camera in the right place. It's pretty close, and if we were making a print that we were going to make thousands of copies of and stuff like that, we would never do that because it's too much trouble for the printer. But these share certificates, I'm only going to be making 30 or 40 of them, and then they're going to be tossed aside. So having something that close, it's going to be here to here. Having something that close is not the greatest idea. But as I said, we're not making very many copies at all, and I think I can get away with it. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And of course, we'll be using a little chibi brush. Okay, let's get the work. Someone says they miss seeing me use the double pairs of glasses. I certainly don't. So, got you 10 minutes to show and tell, no problem, thank you.
Someone's speaking about talking about Ayano san shooting a photograph. I saw on Instagram yesterday she put up that picture of me sitting outside drinking coffee. And it didn't look very look like David slumped over the chair. <laughs> looked like this guy. <clears throat> if I'd have known she was gonna do that, I could have like sat up straight or something or showed my cup of coffee or smiled or whatever. It looks like this guy's slumped there, you know, my god, and she put that on Instagram. The funny thing though about that picture. If you haven't seen it, our Instagram yesterday, Ayana-san put up a little picture of on a Saksa morning, Dave was just sitting there outside, relaxing for a few minutes, drinking a cup of coffee. And she thought it was funny. I had a Lawson coffee and she had a 7-Eleven coffee. But the other funny thing about that photograph is you look at that photograph, it's okay to talk about this, I guess. I can see in that photograph, there are two windows on different buildings that are the offices of Yakuza organizations <laughs> there's there's two of them visible in that picture i'm not going to actually identify them which one is which but they aren't there i wasn't thinking about it at the time i was just sitting there drinking a cup of coffee you know but you can see in that photograph two yakuza offices this is a saksa a saksa Having said that i can add that it's nothing that affects us in any way whatsoever those people do not deal with us. They're not interested in us. We're no threat to them. They're no threat to us. There's nothing to do. They don't even notice me, and I don't even notice them. I know I've been here now long enough that I know sort of who's who and what's going on in these places. And uh, we sometimes have a tiny bit of trouble with parking, where a big jet black car with the windows covered up will park in a place that's bothersome to us and whatever can't be helped, we'll just leave it alone and a while later they drive away, it's okay, you know. But uh, yeah, they're here, they're here. One of those offices is in this block and the other one we can see in the distance in, in, the, other, in the next block. What do they do there? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, are these awful people running protection rackets? Or are they, are they prostituting 12-year-old girls or something? I know nothing about what those people actually do. Just simply they're there. We can see them coming and going. They're very obvious people. We see them. And everybody in the district knows who those people are. But what they actually do, I have no idea. I mean, do the bars here have to pay protection money? Or is that a thing of the past? I don't know. A little woodblock print shop certainly doesn't. They've never, ever, ever come anywhere near us. But if we were part of the Mizu Shobai, if I was running a bar, would they come up the stairs and say, nice place you got here. Shame if something would happen to it. I don't know, is that what still happens? I have no idea, absolutely no idea. I don't think it's like that anymore. I don't, the Yaksa, they're really are sort of on the out now. They're sort of on, on the run. Society has sort of come to a new understanding that we don't really need or want this kind of stuff anymore. You know? So construction business, they might be in garbage collection, I don't know, like some other countries. I really don't know. I, I have no personal knowledge of this whatsoever. You know? Just I see them coming and going. And to a large extent, you know, they're kind of normal people. The, the office that's closest to us here, the guy who parks in front of us sometimes, you know, he's a normal guy. I, I didn't count his fingers, but there's no specific evidence. He's got a girlfriend. He's got, they've got a couple of little dogs, little yappy dogs, and they put their dogs in a basket and roll them around the neighborhood for a walk. <laughs> I can never get that, whatever. The dogs go in the basket, the people get the walk, the dogs just sit in the basket. Quack, 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 quack. And this guy and his girlfriend, they have two of these little yappy dogs. He parks this big black car here and, and puts the dog basket in the trunk and uh, then they head upstairs.
but to the other office, the one that's farther down the street, that one is different. That's an active, uh, a really active office, and there's been trouble there. My God, I've seen police stakeouts down there, and one night down at that other office, and maybe this was before we started Twitch streaming, so I probably haven't told this story. There's uh, the office down the street there. Something happened one night, and there was must have been some huge fight in there. And one of the guys barricaded himself in the office. I, I did, I, we heard the story later on. It's in the white building down the street, the white apartment building. And each of the units has balconies, and one of them, more, at least one of them, is an office like this. And some guy had got drunk. There'd been a fight. I have no idea the background. He had barricaded himself in the in the office there. And what he started, he started throwing stuff over the balcony onto the street. And this is happening like one or two o'clock in the morning. We're all sleeping, but the noise started, stuff smashing, sounds, people yelling, screaming, wake up. I come on my balcony, look down what's going on. And it was really a thing. It was really a thing. This guy up there was screaming and shouting. He started throwing furniture, everything he could pick up, over the balcony. He'd throw a flower pot. He'd throw a chair. There must have been a sort of a brick and board bookcase in there. He started showing, throwing bricks over here. And they're coming down into the street and then landing with a smash. And a crowd sort of starts to gather here. And I'm watching from my balcony. And police come. The guy comes from the local Coban and they're yelling up to him. And I guess some police probably went in the front of the building to head up there and sort of get this stopped. And then he must have found either a little safe or something. He found some money. And there were bundles of money, and I watched from my window. Didn't understand what it was at first. He threw this thing over the balcony, and it popped open in the air and started fluttering as it fell to the ground. And it was clear this was bundles of money. And the crowd at the bottom, by now there's 12, 20, 30 people all around this then. And the police guy, who's still this, he's waving his baton saying, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. And the crowd goes, zoom. All for this stuff, they're catching money in the air, they're grabbing it. Some guy reaches down, grabs what might have been like the core of the bundle, and he, the policeman tries to stop him, the guy just runs like crazy, and a minute later, the people are really almost all gone, the money is all gone, and the guy's still up there. It was a hugely, hugely interesting affair. It would have been fun to get video on this, but I didn't, you know, I'm a long way away, I'm down the street, I didn't really catch what was going on much. And a while later, they must have broken in the front door. The other policeman must have got up there inside the building, broken in the front door, and then they got this stopped. But uh, it was huge, huge fun. This was back in the early days. I hadn't been in a Saksa for very long. And I was thinking, like, what kind of place, what kind of district have I got myself into, you know? Guys get drunk and throw bundles of money out the window. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm getting the hang of this camera. It's either too bright or it's too dark, but whatever, we're getting the hang of it. Okay, we have a show and tell. And I'll, this one it will be going into the collection. Oops, oh, look at it, too bright. What's going on? Come on. If I put mm, too light or too dark. Let's try it, let's try it, let's try it, let's try it. Okay, let's have a look at this. Now I know what's inside here. I bid on this auction a few days ago. And, it's, and this is one of those lucky auctions where the guy described it incorrectly. He described it as insatsubutsu, printed matter. And he described it as mokuhan insatsu, printed, machine printed woodblock prints. And that's actually not what they are. They are real woodblock prints. I've seen them before, I know them, but because of this description, he just put on insatsubutsu. So other people stayed away in droves and nobody else bid on this thing, and we picked it up. Let me find the link to the auction. I'll show you what this is. Copy link. Go to Twitch. Paste it in here. Away we go. So here's the link to the auction a few days ago. And those of you who can read Japanese, you'll see he, described, he describes this as 
木版印刷。It's been opened. What's he doing? And we have a treasure, a really, really, really unusual treasure. Now we've already got the prints. In fact, we've seen these prints already. I have two of them actually. In fact, some of the people on this chat is Rodsan here, the person who L Rodsan. I know what names, names, names. He, I know, because he and I can communicate about this. He has a set of these prints. Let me pull them out and show you here. These are Tokaido prints that are not the normal Hoedo set. It's another, Hiroshige designed many, many, many sets of Tokaido prints. And this is a, a more, a set, uh, a different set. And this is a Taisho, late Meiji or early Taisho reproduction set. And they were pasted to postcards and they were sold for people to use as actual postcards. Put this in your friend, put this in the post, write a letter to your friend, wish you were here, that kind of stuff. So we have a set of the prints in our collection already. I haven't got them scanned or photographed and up online, but we do have them. This came in now, it's the same set of prints, but uh, this is, for me, this is dynamite. You guys are probably going to shrug. For me, it's dynamite. They are in the original packaging, and they show that this was a subscription series. It was sold back in the era by subscription, by package. They took the set of 54 prints. Most Tokaido sets are 55. They made this one as 54 because they were printed four up. At the time, they couldn't do it with an odd number, so they took two of the station, stations, Kanaya and Shimada, and they took two of Hiroshige's prints and made one design of it. So there's only 54 in this series, and they are in the original packaging that were sent out to subscribers two at a time. Somebody must have had to subscribe to this, and every week or every month you got the little package in the post, and inside it there were two of the prints. Let's have a look inside this. One, two, and what else is here? Oh, I see. Yeah, you got every, each time, you got the list of all the prints. And we've seen these before because I've had the, the whole set. Here's the English to this thing. Here's the company. Shin Edo. Nowadays, this would be spelled differently. It would be S H I N E I D O. This is the old spelling of this thing, of this company name. And the real deal for me, the real reason I'm excited about this is because the packaging not only has the number, it has, for example, this is Dai Sang Kai. This is the third group. It's got the subscription price printed on the back. And here it is. The price for two Nimai, it's Ju Go Sen. It's 15 Sen for the two, and then it says postage two Sen, Ni Sen. So to get two of these prints like this, it would arrive in the mail in the post, and you would be paying 17 Sen. Uh, sen is a division in the yen. We don't have it anymore. Nowadays, the yen is the smallest division. In the older days, 100 years ago, yen was actually quite a high amount of money. Someone might be paid a monthly salary of 3 yen or 4 yen, something like this. I don't know the, the numbers per generation. But inside the yen, you had a division of sen. And it was 100. The word sen means 1,000. But sen, I believe there were 100 sen inside each yen. Ayano-san, do you know the old sen, the old money before the war? Mm -hmm. Inside the yen there was sen. Each yen was 100 sen, desu ka? Naze sen? Why did they pronounce it as a thousand? No connection with the word a thousand. The kanjis are different though. Yeah, kanji are different, ne? So, so, so. So it would have been, yeah. Sen means any like coins. Just a division, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, can you do a quick Google for me? Do, do a bit of a, a research challenge. <laughs> and say I don't know exactly what year these prints are, but let's say they're the first year of Taisho. In Taisho 1, a 
print that would cost, for two prints, it cost 15 cents. What would that be like in modern money? Any ideas? I'm, people, The people on the you know, chat here are going to be trying the same thing. How much is that in modern money? And I don't know. But two of these woodblock prints cost, at that time, 15 cents. So one hand equals half a cent, 100 cents. Yes, and this is 15 cents to buy two of these prints. What would that be like in modern money? You know, I don't have any idea. What was a normal person's salary back then? I don't know. 15,000? Who knows? So this is the good news. We've got this now. Evidence of this subscription series. We've got the price. The bad news about this is there's only 40 here. There are 54 prints in this publisher's set. They're not all here. There's only 40 of them. It's not a full set. Can't be helped. Unless this is what was confusing on the auction. It says here, Mokuhan in Satsu. And there's nothing to do with Insatsu. These things are actually full, true woodblock prints. We have a set, as I said, we have a set upstairs already, and some of them have come off the backing cardboard. And these are actually fully hand-carved, hand-printed prints at this size. Yeah, you can see the striations. You can see the baron marks even on the front of this sheet. They're in good condition. This whole set, whenever we see it, it always does look heavily toned. Either the paper they used was a kind of paper that maybe has quite a bit of pulp in it and it would tone quickly. I don't know. Or it's just simply the color choices they chose. But this set always looks quite heavily toned. But it's very well done. Oh my God, the carvers have done a good job on this, you know. All these lines. They've taken care, all the dots on the thing, you know, nobody cares anymore. But whoever carved this back then, and this is easily a hundred years ago, every, the guy who carved this took time and trouble to make each of these dots look like nice bits of grass. It's such pride in their work for stuff that was so cheap. I guess there's discussion on what these things are worth. I myself really don't know. I can't put a value on this. How cheap was this? We've got this old folks tale that says Japanese woodblock prints used to be the same price as a bowl of noodles, blah, 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 back in the old days. And it's a meaningless thing to say because they were prints of every level and every price range back in the old days. And to say that one thing, that a typical print was a bowl of noodles, just, I'm sorry, is a complete misrepresentation of it. And this now, of course, this is no longer Edo time. This is many years ahead. This is tw early, early 20th century. It might be late Meiji. It might be Taisho. It won't be as far as Showa. So best guess for a date for me is just 1920. Between 1900 and 1920 is when these were made. There would be a way to find out, actually, because this set would have been advertised back in the day in newspapers and or art magazines. If anybody, you know, I mean, we just don't have the ability to put the research together, but there will be advertisements in newspapers of the day saying, here, we have the Tokaido series ready for subscription, get two a week, their own postcards ready for you to send to your friends and stuff like this. And that advertisement will tell us all we need to know. It'll tell us when these were published and how they were put into the market. But I, have, I, I just don't have the research to do this. So, Do we have a value? One sen was about 14 and a half cents in current US money. 15 sen would be two bucks. I guess so. I, I can't say yes or no, but that by itself means nothing because without knowing what a typical salary was back in those days, it's hard to make any, any, any question about this. Who would have bought these prints? And would it have been a week's pay? 
No. Would it have been one hour's pay to buy these? I don't know. Until we have that knowledge, it's difficult to tell what the numbers mean. You know, was it the same price as a hamburger? I don't know. Not that they had hamburgers back then. So I think the, the best, if you could find the numbers, the best thing to, to compare it with would be, say, a typical meal. How much would you pay for dinner in a restaurant, a typical restaurant? If you have that kind of comparison available, then you have a way to, to compare with modern, with modern times, you know. Bit torn here, something glued on, not sure. So it was the price of a bowl of noodles, yeah, right? <laughs> it <turned out> to be. <laughs> okay, you got me there, fair enough. Someone's asking, are the speckles caused by dosa or washi texture? I'm not sure what you mean by speckles here. Let's grab a clean one. I don't see a whole lot of texture here. I see smooth printing. I don't see the kind of speckle that we were talking about the other day when we had dosa that was very much too strong. I don't see anything like that here. The printing paper here is actually extremely thin. As I said, we've got some of these upstairs that are already pulled off their backing sheets. And my God, the washi paper is thin beyond belief. Someone's saying speckles in the flat areas of grass. I mean, like this sort of stuff. This is just printing that is not perfectly good, smooth printing. This is a very tiny bit careless printing. But for this kind of a product at this size and at this price, no, this is okay. These are very well printed. Nobody would complain about this. And I don't see any evidence of, of bad sizing or anything, not at all. We've got to get some of these, you know. We've got to get some of these online, but uh, just how much time we can spend on this. We are all just busier, busier, busier than whatever analogy you want to use. We don't have enough time to do anything here. Ayano san has hit the ground working, and she's just going to be burning that keyboard until it's time to go home. Someone's asking, it's two whole sets. I'm not sure what you mean. I know the, this, we now have this set three times. I own the set twice already, once in a wooden box and once in a set by itself. And now we have 40 prints from the series this way. It's not Hiroshige's finest work, you know. It's nice stuff, but it's not his finest work. And I'm so disappointed by the fact that this company decided to do these with such a strong toning. I don't know why they did that. You can see some of the washi. Do you see this? See the vertical lines here? This is part of the structure of the washi paper. It's not super fine hosho paper. This is more like a gasenshi, more like a cheap Chinese paper. These vertical lines here are actually structure of the washi paper itself. Yeah, they've all got the same. And uh, I, I'm not sure on this. We'd have to do more research to find out. The symbol you're seeing here could have been on the original prints, the Hiroshige series, or it could be a symbol that represents this company, Tokyo Shin Edo. I don't know, I'm sorry. Off the, off the seat of my pants here, I don't know the answer to that. It would be easy to find if you look up some of these prints on the net in their original form, whether they had that symbol there or not. I don't know. My guess is it's the original Edo Publishers mark, but I could be wrong. The other thing that's uh, curious to me, I, know I don't have them all here, but once I saw on the auction that these things did have the price, I was curious to see if the price changed through the set. 
It says here, all the ones I've opened here so far say the same price, 15 sen. But it would also be interesting to see as we get closer towards the end of the set, did the price go up or did it stay as 15? Let's take a quick peek here. No, they're all the same. 15 sen and 2 sen for postage. Well, actually, that will give us a guide, too. When you think about the idea that to mail something like this cost 2 sen. Nowadays, if we were trying to mail a little package like this inside Japan, it would be 84 yen. And then if the prints themselves were 15 sen, that's like eight times as much. So if it costs 84 yen to mail this, and if the prints were eight times as much, that would mean the price of the prints was about 600 or 700 yen. Roughly five bucks, six bucks, I don't know. So yeah, a first stab at this value, two prints for five bucks, postage 84 yen might be the kind of price we're looking at here. Who could afford that? I don't know. Let's just take a look at one more. We can't go through the whole thing here, all of these. We're going to be putting these online. Let's just take a look at one more pair. Oh, 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 lucky. Look at lucky, 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 lucky. This one is separating from its backboard. Here we go. So we can see here, that's the cardboard. Look, listen. That's the heavy cardboard to back this thing. And this is the thin washi that they're printed on. I've got to be careful. I don't want to destroy this, but let's see if we can... There you are. There it is. There's the back of the woodblock print. And there are. There are barren striations. The color is coming through to the back. In case there was still any doubt about it, these are absolutely woodblock prints glued down. And what Dave would like to do is have a whole set released from mm -hmm. the backing. Do I dare put these in the bath? I don't know. I don't know what kind of glue they've used. And up until now, we've only had full sets. And I can't take a full set and destroy it. So if I'd have put one of these in a bath to see if I could take it apart and it didn't work, I would have destroyed the set. So up to now, I haven't been able to play with these too much. But now that we have a broken set, and a set that one of them is already halfway off, you know where this is going. I'm going to get some hot water today at lunchtime, and this little print is going to be the test case. It's going to go in the bath and this one is going to come off. I have a few to play with now and if it turned out that I really screwed up badly and destroyed this, I have not really destroyed anything of value. We only have 40 prints from the set and if I happened to destroy one, we would only have 39. But the benefit of having the research outweighs that risk. So I'm going to do that. Now that I can see we've got a broken set and I'm not destroying anything of value, I am going to try pulling one of these off. And maybe then, maybe that's an idea. If I, uh, let's put this idea on the table. If I, I'm going to try this. If it turns out that these do come off relatively easily without major surgery, if they do go into uh, warm water and if they come off smoothly without any major damage, then yeah, let's make a date. Let's do that. Let's have a hot tub stream. I'll take the cameras upstairs and we'll do this on online. Let's try that. So did it turn out that we could get these two prints for a bowl of noodles? <laughs> Is that the way? Uh, that would serve me right after making that comment. It would serve me right to find out that, yeah, two of these prints are worth a bowl of noodles. That's fine. Fair enough. Yeah, invite Taran-san again. He's really busy. He's super, super busy. Taran-san is now a full-time English teacher, plus trying to work as a carver as well. Trying to get both things to work, you know, whatever. Okay, anyway, so the next stream, don't jump on hot tubs here. The next stream, today's Thursday, I'll be back two more days from now. I will be carving, carving the blocks you just saw me do the color separations on. I've got to get the share certificate out the door. So that's going to be the job the next couple of streams.
Okay, I don't have an outside camera. I'm going to have to do some research. And if my video card is dead, I'm going to have to buy another video card. Anyway, whatever. We'll do what we can do. Thanks for the stream. Thanks to the mods again for helping out. Uh, I will read the chat at lunchtime over, over my sandwich. See you in a couple more days. No outside camera today, so all we got to do is just push the button. All you've got is me. Stop streaming. Bye for now. See you next time. Thanks again.